Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting March 20th, 2019 at 6.08 here in the municipal offices at 8 Conway Road in South Deerfield. Uh, we'll start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, just so everyone knows, this meeting is being recorded and televised. Uh, do we have any minutes to kind of go over? Okay. Um, we do have a, a hearing schedule at 6.15, but we have a couple of minutes. Um, I got a request from Deerfield Academy about putting a plaque in front of the Civil War statue. Yes. And whether it's going to be on the fence or on a stone uh, behind it, they just wanted permission. I did happen to speak with Lisa about this, and she said that you know we could do that. So um, um, I make a motion uh, to approve um, putting a plaque in, however they choose to do it for the um, Civil War. Uh, statue of an old Deerfield. Whether they put it on the stone in front of it yeah. or on the fence. Okay. Yeah. I'll so. second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. So I can call them and let them know. If you wanted to start with the um, the articles, I could just give you a kind of a synopsis. I know we had the library on that scheduled at 6.15. You, you know, um, no one's coming from UMass that you know of, right? Okay, um, why don't we, I know people are here for the UMass um, discussion. Oh, yeah, so idea. why don't you um, come up to the table and um, we can talk about that for a few minutes. Would that be okay? Sure. And that way you don't have to stick around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a couple people from UMass. Thank you. Is, uh, could, I, I wanna make sure that we don't have you early, if that's okay. That's you. Yeah, that's you, yeah. So Bud, hi. Hello. You need to address the um, audience, who you are, and. My name is Bud Driver, and I'm at a butter to the turf farm off of River Road in Deerfield, South Deerfield. You hand up, and, and now and you can. My name is Hannah Yaffe. Thank you, both of you, for coming. Um, Diana, could you update us? Because you said you had a couple back and forth with UMass at the, this point. Well, I did try to get a hold of folks there. I talked to. Um, you know what, Diana? You need to speak into the microphone oh, sure. so people can yes. hear you. Yeah. So I. Um, I had gotten a report. What I really wanted to bring up tonight, what I brought out, was the report from uh, Lynn Rose, because the board hadn't seen that report yet. Um, so I wanted, I included it in your packet. Um, and I also had uh, spoken to the health agent, because I thought it would be helpful if the health agent were to um, work with us to reach out to UMass and talk to them directly about some of the concerns that uh, were raised in the report. So. Um, I did, you know, and then I, I included his email to you in that. So he wanted to, um, I guess, I don't know if he wanted to talk about the report at all, Carolyn, or? Well, what I wanted to do was um, make it clear to UMass that um, we would not like them to start spraying at all because we had sort of, if we're giving them the courtesy to extend to another meeting, Selectman's meeting, a Board of Health meeting, we do not want them to start spraying until they um, give us the courtesy of coming in and having a discussion. And I want to make sure it's clear that, um, you know, James was very clear out of overabundance of caution, he's suiting up. And for that, and I think our neighbors in that neighborhood, um, our residents should have the same courtesy of. Uh, overabundance of caution to have the ability to close their windows or bring their pets in or do whatever they would like to do with notifi some notification of the spraying and what is being sprayed. So we need to get this resolved. I don't want to be antagonistic or have any bad feeling, but I also 
have no hesitation of ordering a cease and desist order since we haven't had any discussions or further information from them. So I'm willing to go another two weeks. Uh, I think it's very important we send a letter to them tomorrow, if it's possible, saying that we um, would appreciate their attendance at our next meeting and that they, they can't spray until we d resolve what's happening there. Let me ask what, what, I don't know, what department at UMass is in charge of this? Um, when James Perot came here with his uh, peer group, yes, it, they, they were listed in the newspaper the following day by our, the news reporter here. I don't. I, I looked for that news uh, article tonight, but I couldn't find it. But uh, I do know that their names in the departments where they work at are in that news article. But as far as James Perot being the superintendent at the turf farm. Uh, we're definitely wanting to cultivate a relationship with him, Kip, because I'm treating him as a neighbor, not as a governmental agency that's, you know, a $11 billion industry of uh, growing grass. So I understand the, the com complexity of the whole matter. And then, of course, them being a governmental agent having to spray chemicals for their research. So. I know we're going down a slippery slope probably in some areas, so I just think as far as um, knowing what they're spraying, when they're spraying it so we can be geared up for it ourselves and then uh, maybe creating a better buffer zone between the neighborhood and the farm itself, which is about a six foot, uh, six foot uh, span between the property lines. That's basically a buffer zone. And so I think there is a lot of things that James Perot, as the superintendent, can do over there that's, that doesn't cost a lot of money, but he can build relationships there. And I, I think that's hopefully the direction we're going, Kip. Well, I appreciate that. I was just curious as to what department, so maybe we could send the letter could be directed to the higher up. So, right. yeah, because yeah. the challenge is that the, with the person that he's referring to, he's he's the superintendent. He's right. the person that's just he's in the field, like right. working in the field. So he's right. not the person that is being responsive to us. The person we need to respond to us isn't responding to us from UMass because I don't think we have enough information yet to be convincing to them. Um, of the concern. So I think we just, that's why I, I, we have a report from Lynn, um, but even your own health agent is saying, you know, is, is um, you know, has questions about it. So I guess I just, we can't go to, to this, to this, as you're saying, this is a large government agency. This, this has been something they've been doing for decades, for 25 or 30 years. They tell you, you know, their process and that they do, um, you know, 1,200 research plots, uh, 70 small sites. So they they're, they're, they do, you know, we, we've got some information about what they're doing, but we don't have, we can't just, we need to establish um, the, uh, the strength of the argument of our concerns, I think, before well, they're going to make I, any I, changes I, about I, we're, we're how not, they operate. I, we're not looking to necessarily change how they're operating. We that's, want notification. No. Well, that, and well that's, that's a, that's a change, thing. but that's a very, well, I would think that's probably Diana, a substantial yeah. change. Diana, it's common courtesy yeah. and it is a health concern and yeah. it is the Board of Health that will decide that. And I feel very strongly that if they cannot be bothered to respond to us, then we have no alternative but to um, issue a cease and desist order, which I have no hesitation. And, and I think that could be outlined in a letter to the head of the department that said, you know, we're not asking for a whole lot here. Uh, you know, but, but there are, you know, people around that are affected by this and that, you know, they should, you know, at least comply and try to work with us and the neighbors to make it a safe environment. We We are trying to, we are very considerate, I think, in the fact that we are being patient. Yeah. But um, I know for a fact that James Perot is going to do the right thing for the uh, Mountain View Estates. I know that for a fact. As far as his peer group that he answers to, that's a whole other story because they're the ones that are looking at the rules and regulations of what they've been doing and 
maybe they're going to have to change the way they're doing things now because it's been brought to the public's attention what's going on over there. Like I say, I was there for 25 years. I didn't know they sprayed 70 applications of chemicals, and so that does worry me. And I, my neighbor, Bob Maynard, is not here tonight, but he made it clear he wants to know what the long-term effects are going to be. But here, Bob and I, Bob's been there for 40 years, and I've been there for 25 years. I think my hair fell out because of my jeans, you guys, not because of the spraying at the turf farm. So my, my point is, is that uh, um, uh, we, we have to figure this out, yeah. but I do agree with Carolyn. I don't think they should be doing anything until they speak with the Board of Health here, you guys, to determine exactly what chemicals they are spraying, uh, what harm they are to the environment as far as the initial uh, broadcasting of it, and then uh, 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 the notification of us so we can be uh, warned about it. I think all of that's very important. As far as the rest of it, uh, I'm sure James Perot is going to work on shoring up his property lines and buffer zones, and I'm sure now that it's been brought to his attention, I'm sure that uh, things will be different over there. We're just waiting to hear from his peer group, and I think giving them a couple of more weeks, Carolyn, is in the best interest of everybody. I do, too. We're trying to work this out, be yes. good neighbors, yeah. but we do expect them to be neighbors to us as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. I personally, uh, I, think, uh, I think that the name of the department is Turf and Research Management. We have all the information. Yeah, you have you that do? information? Yes, we do. Diane, um, thank you. Yeah, I, I, right. I personally Thanks, don't share in that optimism, honestly, having yeah. been an entomology major yeah. and taken Aggie courses at UMass back in the DD, DDT days, I think that it's the same attitude. It's like, this is fine, this is fine until the research shows it's not. And they're not giving us any of the chemicals except that one chemical. Yeah, MS that's the only information we've that's got. That's the only information. Is the one chemical. Look at all of that, the, the dangers from that chemical are right. like half a page right. long. I mean, I personally, I don't, I don't feel that I, as an abutter, should have to close my windows and sit inside my house and bring my animals in 70 days out of a season. I think that's unreasonable. I want them to put up a barrier. Yeah. Well, personally, well, I, you I know, think that it is, should be common courtesy that they notify the, the abutters. Well, they're not even willing to do that, you well, know? No. We'll it's, see. We'll get when that. is the next meeting? Um, uh, is it the April 3rd um, that you would give them until? Yes. It's, um, yeah, it would be in two weeks, which is yeah, April. Is April 3rd. Okay. okay. Diana will send out the letter tomorrow, and um, we'll, we'll give them until April 3rd. Okay. And we'll make a decision then what to do okay. if they don't respond. So um, if you, we'll put it on the agenda. Diana will put it on the agenda right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. uh, for 6.15. Okay, 6.15. Okay. Great, right. thank you. All right, thank you. Um, Candace, folks from the library, want to come on up. Candace, thank you for waiting. We just didn't want you to go early because um, cause you're listed for 6.15. Okay. Is this working? Is this on? Yes. No. Sometimes you've you got to get very close to them. Candace, okay. can, um, <laughs> um, uh, can you both introduce yourselves and um, yes. let everyone know that you're here for the Tilton Library? Yes. Good evening. Uh, we are here for the Tilton Library and wanted to introduce ourselves since we're both new in our roles. My name is Satu Zoller, and I'm chair of the Board of Trustees. As of several months ago, I wanted to do, introduce Candace Bradbury Carlin, who's our new library director. And Candace had some things to talk about with the budget. Hi. Hi. Um, nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you for coming, nice both of you. Thank yes. you. Yes. So um, the library went to the fi uh, finance committee meeting um, a couple weeks ago, presented our budget. It, it got loosely approved. Um, and I say loosely because they felt like, um, if you looked at what I gave you, the page after the budget, that, that um, kind of, it talks about in detail you know, the, the line items, that we wanted to increase um, the hours of well, previously, we wanted to increase the hours of both the director's position and the children's um, librarian position. And we decided, uh, the trustees and I decided at our, our last meeting last week to hold back on the director's um, 
position being uh, ours being increased and just the children's librarian because we've re we really feel the need there. Really that, that position needs more planning time because most of their time is spent at the desk and it's just, it's just um, too distracting for them to be planning to, you know, um, to plan and develop programs, to work on their own budget, to order materials and books. And um, so the finance committee felt like it would be, you know, the proper procedure would be to get that okay with you guys and then they would formally approve the budget. Okay. So that's why we're here. And then I included a, a few other things just for your FYI for the library since this is my first time as the library director at the select board meeting. Um, the status of where we're at with the library building project. And then um, we are doing a strategic plan this year and this is the flyer in the back is uh, an invitation to everybody in Deerfield who's interested to be a part of a very large um, community workshop that we're, oh, three, that we're gonna have here in the town hall in, in the coming weeks. Okay. Do you, go ahead and talk about them individually then. Oh, okay. So uh, you heard about the budget and the library building project. Um, there's two phases we, we, com we got funded for and we uh, completed the first phase and uh, which was the design phase, and that was probably about four years ago. Yep. Um, and that, was, uh, that entailed hiring an architect and a project manager and getting a, an initial design, and uh, we presented the design to the community. And then the next phase, um, and this was all done under uh, Sarah Woodbury, mm -hmm. and she, um, the next phase was to apply for the construction um, part of the project, and when they listed the, um, the grant, the grant, the grantees. Um, we were on the waiting list, and so we've been slowly making our way up the waiting list to um, number seven. And the way I've lined it out here is that um, it's hard to say because there are a couple. There are a couple of um, things that could make us move up the waiting list quicker or not. Uh, there's a couple of libraries, one of which is very close, the Deer, uh, Greenfield Library, that if they get funded, then that'll keep us kind of where we are in the waiting list, which would mean that we probably wouldn't um, you know, be available for getting uh, funding for a couple more years. If they, they and one or the other two, or none of them get funded, then we'll go right up the waiting list, and that means that we could be available sooner for, um, for funding. So that's where we're at right now. And also, um, the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, the MBLC, they're applying for a uh, $250 million bond, and they are trying to get a, an increase in their spending cap, which hasn't increased in many years. And so if they get, if they get that bond and they get that increased yearly spending um, budget, then that'll also move us up the waiting list faster. So there's a lot of unknowns right now. But I just want to let kind of let... Um, because uh, Jeff Upton actually came to us and wanted to know, you know where we were at because we hadn't sent an up update up in a while. And just because not a lot had happened. So this is just where we're at right now. It's just a little bit of uh, limbo. Um, strategic plan, something we do every five years. It's something that informs the library through um, public discussion about what the, um, the needs are in the community for our library. And um, so we're going to start off that whole process with something a little different than what we've done before. Before, we've had a committee of 10 to 12 people that would meet a couple of times and go through a, a process. And this time, uh, we're starting it off with opening it up to um, three dates of up to 50 people. And um, it's a three-hour process. And we hired a, a, a consultant who's worked with libraries. She's very, um, very dynamic and... Um, the procedure is, you know, it's really fun. It gets people talking about, you know, the big picture right down to the details of what, you know, what people think uh, is, is good for, you know, our community and what the library's role is in that. So uh, we've been heavily promoting this and trying to get um, as many diverse voices as possible, including, you know, all ages. So that means, you know, right down to uh, the kids because they're users of the library. Um, business owners, residents, um, you know, town employees, anyone that has any investment in the community that they would want to have uh, some, you know, a voice for what happens with the library in the next five years. How wonderful. Yeah. So that's it should be a fun process. And there's an online 
registration that Candace has distributed really widely, and I think you're getting some good response. Yeah, we're getting some response. good, yeah, people are signing up, so I think we'll have a good oh, turnout. That's wonderful. Um, we haven't gotten, actually, um, an update on your capital campaign. I know you have an event next Thursday. Unfortunately, yes. the, the three of us are um, have a Selectman's Association oh. meeting that night, so I'm really so sorry that oh. we won't be there, but oh. could you give us a little update on that? I don't remember what our... We have we we did pause on the capital campaign because there was a pause in the timeline of of what was going to happen with the library uh, project, so the meet, the group hasn't been meeting. Um, right. But we'd, we'll start once we know again, you know where we stand in line. So. I'm curious, why did you stop? We paused. We okay. didn't stop. The, the reason I ask yeah. is maybe eight months or so mm -hmm. ago. Um, your, your prior director came in and they were looking for some grant money and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And they made it uh, sound like they had got collected about $600,000 yeah. and stuff like that. But in reality, they didn't collect anything. Well, pledges. They got pledges. Yeah. So they have no right. money. Right. So you know where those pledges can go. Well, there's there. some money. There well, all right, some, there's some. Yeah. But yeah. There it, is, the, yeah. the, the big portion of it is, in, um, and I, I just want you to know, because mm -hmm. you're new here, mm -hmm. that uh, th even though there is some there are people in town that think this is a really good thing. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people that don't. Okay. And in the big picture here is that, you know, the town is facing some extremely expensive things. You know, we're, we're talking about huge tax increases, um, not only from our tax rate portion, but, you know, debt exclusions. Mm -hmm. We're looking huge, you know, some of the, if you happen to have a home in town, you could see your sewer bills increase mm -hmm. as much as $600, you know, and these are things that everybody's going to be facing. So, you know, if your library project, in my opinion, mm -hmm. was having to be pushed back a little bit, I think it would be to your benefit. Because I, th what was the last thing that we looked at, not this year, but next year, we're looking at $13 million spending. Right. And that's, you know, that's doubling our annual budget. I mean, I know it doesn't happen in one year, but right. these are, and, and that's just that part. You know, and now we get the school coming in for, was it 1.8 million for several years in a row? Right. And this is just going to be on top of it. No, so. I, just, I, I misspoke when I said we stopped. We haven't stopped. Yeah. We've paused. And we're still in contact with all of those people who've made sure. pledges and letting them know where we stand. Yeah. We've had other priorities, um, sure. hiring a new director, things of that nature. Sure. So people have been busy with those things. But we are planning on continuing yeah. the fundraising. I just, I just wanted her to know. Yeah. So oh, all yeah. of a sudden, she's, well, geez, where did all this come from? Because all I hear is all these positive things. Right. And I, not that I'm not positive right. about it. It's just the reality mm -hmm. of all these things that are coming to a head. Don't right. be depressed. No. no. Don't we're not depressed. I feel yeah. like that we're we can, very excited. We can yeah. do it. And yes. we're and working on the sewer as well. Right. And we don't yeah. want to, you know, this is an amazing opportunity. We did receive a grant of a substantial amount. And we don't want to throw that away. Yeah, and oh, we no. were we were advised too um, that timing is up by our rep from mm -hmm. the MBLC that because we're on the waiting list and we, so we could mm -hmm. be three to five years down the road, we could be one to two years and we don't know yet. And we'll have a, a clearer picture yeah. come um, July yeah. Yeah. that if um, if we're three to five years, you don't want to be too heavily um, um, fundraising because the closer you get to the project, the more the higher the chance that you're going to get pledges. And right. so she said to, you know, because I think earlier when the capital campaign mm -hmm. got started, we were expecting that we were going to be asking, you know, yeah. going ahead with construction in a year or two. But then we found out that it was going to be longer. She said, why don't you slow it down? Because I guess, you know, you, she doesn't want people to forget about yeah. the project. Right. 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 So, so, yeah, but, so it'll, get, yeah. it'll get picked up once we know what our <laughs> timeline is. This See, makes me feel very guilty. I'm writing you a check right now because I'm oh. one of the ones that hasn't sent it. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. I, I'll make it. I tell you what, Carolyn, you sign the check and let me fill it out. <laughs> that would be great. But uh, I am one of the ones that are kind of deadbeat. But and we also plan I, to. I am really supporting <laughs> you. And we do plan to come see you regularly once as we okay. have updates about yes. timing. Yes. Well, I, I, for, from my point of view, I also wish that you would speak with your, I guess, architect. Um, I was not, being a, a builder of 50 years, I was not impressed with this building at all, mm -hmm. especially from an energy point of view. And one thing that you should be aware of, that you have a figure here for a budget of $2,700 for electricity. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you this new bill will be twelve dollars or $13,000. No, we're doing Deerfield 2030, which mm -hmm. means where everybody is going to be um, 
Neutral, we're, net new, right. you know, we are, whatever we they are working on. Oh, right. efficiency. Oh, yeah, yeah. and then yeah. we're going to do away with airplanes, cars, and yeah. Yeah, no, okay. no, 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 no. One of the goals no. is to have an energy. Kip, we only have ten years. Ten only years. Ten, ten years. And you'll be part of twenty thirty. I think I'm going to yes. buy a sports car and go. No, on. we have ten years to ten get years our act left. together. This yeah. is something we're considering for sure. So the library is going to be part of that. What happens in ten years? We'll have kids in the basement pedaling. Then it's irreversible. Well, if if we're not getting a library for three years, and it's going to be. Not used in seven years. Why? Well, no, no, no. Okay, all right. Uh, Kip, Anyways, don't, don't get confused. Okay, yes, we I, understand. And Carolyn, our goal you, wasn't to have you write a check this evening. No, but no, I, I no. feel really oh, guilty. Oh, don't take it. Trust no, me, take no, it. No, um, yes. no. I, I really feel guilty because you know what it was. Um, I was expecting to get something in the mail to like remind oh, me, okay. and um, I just started doing my taxes, and I realized that. <laughs> I didn't do this, and so it's all right. I'll do no, we'll double, take, I, double, we'll take double <laughs> for this year. Okay. Hey, well, thank so, you. Um, three but more weeks. My husband said, "Where's the Tilton Library one?" And I said, "I don't know. I guess I didn't write one out." And I kept looking. <laughs> well, thank you. So anyway, we appreciate it. So yeah. So I guess we um, the the main reason is to see what you guys think about the um, the budget, and because. Um, oh, I have it upside down. It's basically a three-hour increase in a the three -hour increase. library. And our budget increase in total is only 1.24%. So I know that um, you know, the Finance Committee asked for level funding, and we, we feel like it's a pretty, pretty low increase of our overall budget. And so we're hoping that with that in mind, <clears throat> that the increase in hours we're asking for for the child, children's librarian uh, will fa sound reasonable to you guys. Yes. It's only $2,200. Yeah. Um, I make a motion that um, we approve the amended budget. Okay. Um, Today. I'll second the motion. Um, All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, thank you. So, thank you both. I, I really appreciate all the documentation on this. And um, um, I just really, because we do have a lot of capital projects, I really encourage, I mean, people do want to support the library. Yes. Oh, so sure. I, I think... Um, if you keep doing events and yeah. keep it on people's radar, I oh, think yeah. they will. And so maybe, you know, not all the time, but yeah. every couple months you can come and yeah. talk about oh, what's happening. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a plan. And, um, yeah. That just helps people understand. The, uh, if you don't go to the library all the time, like, uh, it's not that I don't <laughs> enjoy the library, but I'm always driving by at the wrong time. Yeah. And so if you don't go a lot, you don't realize how many children and mm -hmm. how many kids mm -hmm. and how many people in the community really do go to the mm -hmm. library oh, sure. and use it for different things. Yeah. And um, I also know it's a real safe haven in yeah. our community. It is. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's really important. So oh, thank, I, you. thank you, Karen. Thank, thank you. you both. Thank you both. Good night. Mm, good night. Don't forget your check. <laughs> you make me less guilty <laughs> and save me a stamp. Thank you. Okay, the, the next item on our agenda, is, Kevin, you want to come up? It's the addition to the composting at the transfer station. Thank you, Kevin. Ooh, and thank you. you for calling in. I just want to take a minute to thank Kevin and all the other participants in the emergency dispensing drill today. Um, we had 100% participation of the activation of um, the Emergency Operations Center for the, our EDS drill with DPH today. Um, I have to say I'm so impressed and I'm so happy. It was within 45 minutes we had 11 uh, you know, we had sent out the message to call call our number, and everybody logged in within 45 minutes. And I just, and that's all four towns, and um, it's really an amazing thing. Even DPH was um, really impressed, and um, I want to say kudos to everyone who participated, including Kevin, um, as for setup and um, support and. And John Pachorek was driving, apparently, and so Adam Sokolowski called back in, and so that was wonderful that Adam covered. And like I said, 100% within 45 minutes, um, we could be protecting our community. So I just have to say it's very impressive record to have across the state. And thank you, Kip and Trevor, for participating as well. Well, it was pretty easy because it came on my phone. I just touched the button and said hello. <laughs> so <laughs> That's okay. 
Yeah, no, he did. He put in the code. He put oh, okay. in the code. Oh, it's it, highlighted on the phone, so I just touched it. So. Yeah, but see, by, but when everyone had to call back and do that, it was a logged in, and it logged in officially in Boston. And so it was very, very impressive. So I just want everyone to know. Thank you. Well, I just looked at the phone. It took me 19 seconds. Do I get a prize for being the first one? Oh, I'm kidding. Well, I'm kidding. Let's no, go. actually, um, you were number five. Wow, After, in 19 <laughs> seconds, I was number five. Yeah, well, Well, listen. I didn't send it there. Okay, go ahead, Kevin. Let's go. You were driving, so That's you didn't right. respond. That's there right. was a little bit of a lag. Hello. Uh, okay, so I, basically what I'm here to is to answer any type of questions as far as the um, food composting at the transfer station. Uh, this is not something that I came up with. I can't take credit for this. It was uh, Lori, M.A., and Rini. Uh, uh, Lori and Rini are here in, in the audience tonight, uh, working with Jan and Amy at uh, Franklin County Solid Waste. Uh, they basically put it, put it all, pretty much all together. So basically, I'm more of the presenter at this point. Uh, long story short is, is, is what they're going to do, because I had a bunch of questions. And what I was concerned about was contamination within the bins. I was, contaminate, I was concerned about what would happen if something was to be rejected, um, you know, and then other questions I had, you know, because I was very concerned um, about, you know, uh, meats and cheeses and things like that that we can't do normally where we do, but where this would go to in Martin's farm, it goes to 150 degrees for like uh, three months, and then it sits there and continually gets turned and turned and turned. So the food process and or the waste that would normally be going in to our trash um, and these are estimates from what I'm getting, <clears throat> excuse me, from uh, solid waste, is hypothetically we could do the low estimate is 20 tons at $81 a ton, so we could save about 16 20 in tipping fees. Uh, higher estimate would be 35 tons that don't have to go there, $81 a ton, 28 almost $2,900. The cost of this is um, Triple T will come in with their dumpster, $90 a month times 12 is $1,080. One-time delivery fee of $85. If we do this before May 1st and this continues, we will get a $700 reimbursement from DEP, which basically brings us down to $465. And again, if you start thinking about the, the savings that we could have, it all boils down to you could actually have a quote-unquote net gain of $1,155 to twenty three seventy. Okay, not only are we saving dollars, but again... Saving the environment at the same time. Right. Now, does this meet, we don't have official criteria for this Deerfield 2030, but it does seem like it fits into the, what we want to um, see as sustainable. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really excited, Kevin, that you were willing to do this, and thank you all for working on this. Um, the only questions I had, um, what about attractants of rodents that's the only questions I had phone that calls was on some this. of the questions I had too it, it's in a, it's in an enclosed container um, they will be changing it out weekly and, um, and if it gets to be a problem you know all they said was just pick up the phone they'll definitely come by they will they will definitely come through at least twice a year and clean it but um, I've got no problems with being able to go ahead and just give that a quick wash down in the summertime you know so um, is this gonna be a, you, I caught the word enclosed, so there'd be something it'd, on the top. It'd be like, it'd bring like a regular dumpster. Okay. So, so. The, and, I know. the reason I ask is because mm -hmm. a lot of times in composting, people put paper plates and there's some plastics. Well, there, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Which right. There will be 300 flyers available during our annual town meeting, printed on colored paper so it stands out, which, by the way, is recycled, with black print to be able to, A, make it more environmentally friendly and much cheaper. Um, there are a lot of things you can compost, meat, bones, fish, eggs, uh, cheese, dairy, tea bags, coffee grounds, filters, um, other non-recyclable paper, napkins, soiled pizza boxes, uh, which you can't recycle now, which now we have to throw away. So now those pizza boxes you can go ahead and put into here. Uh, paper bags, no plastic, uh, flour, sugar bags, uh, paper carton eggs, which you can't um, recycle at this point in time now because of the, the fibers that are within the, um, the box itself. So all of these things now become recyclable. So it's, I see it as a win-win-win. Sounds like a good idea. It really does sound so, like a good idea. So, um, but where I'm, where I'm thinking two things 
is we do have um, the DEP sustainability where we talked about. We also get credits towards other things that we do. So we got about $9,000 so far this year for FY19. What we utilize that money for is to, and again, in the past, we did the, uh, the kitchen compost pails. Well, we did that two years ago. We gave away 200 and they flew out the door. Last year, we did the bags. They completely flew out the door. I didn't um, even get any. So this I year. I didn't know you did that. Uh, well, if you come here to town hall and you purchase your dump sticker before uh, supplies are diminished, you can get this free product. Oh, man. <laughs> You better say it again. Which, which are not on sale yet, but they will be shortly. Okay. <laughs> um, so with that being said, uh, I went ahead and I ordered uh, 300 more of the compost bags, um, or excuse me, the compost pails, and I got like another 25 of the recycling bins, because a lot of times when new people come in, get new stickers, whole nine yards, uh, we give them new, new recycling bins. Um, so that's been taken care of. So this is incentive to go get your dump sticker quick. Exactly. Um, and then All the right. other thing we're also looking at, and, and I'm kind of, it's not really part of the agenda, but I'm just kind of throwing it out to you. If you want to prove it tonight, that's great. And if not, we can talk about it in the future. Uh, a reuse shed, um, which again could be purchased through these funds that would not be a, a cost to the taxpayer at this point. And you can put things there. But the thing is, it has to be monitored. Because, unfortunately, the way there are a lot of people out there, they will leave stuff there because they don't want to pay to throw it away. But the other side of the coin is, is it'd be really nice to have something there so if people want to share stuff, you know, you can go ahead and drop, drop, a, drop a toy or whatever, and if somebody goes ahead and uses it, you know, and if it doesn't go in a week, then, you know, maybe the town goes ahead and eats the cost of the plastic to throw it into the uh, uh, recycling bin. Or not the recycling bin, but the bulky item bin. So um, it's just something just to think about. But what I'm really looking for tonight is, is permission, and I believe Diana should have a DEP on, um, not when I really use the word contract, but it's more of like a, well, yeah, actually. Oh, yeah, you know, I actually see it. Yeah, yes. so that right there, if you guys can sign off on that. It's so basically what that does is that yeah. just lets DEP, it gives us regulations that allows us to go ahead and, and collect these. Um, because of what it is, DEP says that they want to have uh, their hand in it and with that being said this is what they're looking for it's it's not going to be any more type of uh, um, reporting issues that would really come and, and tax more of my time or anything like that uh, it's more of a formality Kevin I just want to thank you very much I'm, I'm really happy that you're gonna do this and the only thing um, I would just like us to keep an eye on any road issues yes um, that would affect anybody obviously exactly. so um, we can put out stuff. I guess. You know, again, that was one of the, my major concerns. But there's so many towns around. Well, actually, we do it right here at Deerfield Elementary. I know. You know, they do it. DA does it. Frontier does it. No. Burnison. Uh, there's a bunch of towns around that are that are doing it. So we're not the new ones in the game. So if there's something new or something that somebody can come up with, um, we'll be able to jump on it fairly quickly. And that's one of the nice things about being associated with solid waste management is is you've got more contacts and more resources. Oh, I know. She's Jana means wonderful. So, um, I make a motion that we sign um, the paperwork that would officially allow Kevin, under the auspices of the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District, to um, start composting. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? I see Bruce has hand up. Go ahead, Bruce. Yeah. Why don't you come up? Hey, man. How you doing? Okay, uh, listen to it. Sounds like a no-brainer, hopefully. hopefully. Uh, uh, I guess the couple of questions, I, you had mentioned rodents, Carolyn. And uh, what about the big green flies? Do you do have houses up there? And those congregate with the dumpsters quite uh, composting quite a lot. Mm -hmm. How are those going to be controlled? Um, unfortunately, I see what happens in the recycling bin up there and the dumpster bin. Uh, we can't even get people to separate stuff for the recycling up there. So is somebody going to have to stand there and monitor what goes into that, con uh, that compost bin? Um, and if there is not being monitored, are we going to end up, such as recycling, penalties if we end up with dirty garbage? You know, people throwing their stuff in in plastic mm -hmm. bags rather than compost bags and things like this. I mean, you know, unfortunately... Um, a good example, as I said, is the recycling. We have very low uh, percentage of recycling as it is. And we've sent out flyers after flyers uh, 
every year and when you get dump stickers. You say a low percentage. We're doing actually pretty good. I thought it was down around 25% or something like that. Oh. Uh, no. I don't no. think it's quite that bad. Um, I thought well, we were doing we, better. We've never been rejected as far as the town. Is there still a bunch of stuff going in there? Yeah. I mean, are we probably close sometimes? Yeah. I'm quite sure we probably are because, unfortunately, and I'm, not, uh, I'm probably not even going to remotely put this the right way, but people don't do the right thing. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, and, and it's unfortunately when other people don't do the right thing, sewer, stuff you throw down there besides what comes out of your body and toilet okay. paper, the rest of the town has to pay for. Right. I you just know, want to so take this opportunity to please remind people not to dump down grease in the sewer. Everybody on the sewer users are paying for grease that's being put down. This and flushables. And yeah. flushables. So or please -flushables. don't. <laughs> Don't put any of those supposedly flushables and grease down. That's what we're fighting here. Okay, sorry. So uh, the other thing is, is I just didn't want to add to your trade, but might as well take the opportunity, right? No, Bruce? people aren't reminded enough about that. Believe me, you know, as yeah. Kevin very well knows. It's, yeah. uh, more well, so I don't. Than I don't think people really sometimes realize that grease is how how destructive grease is. Well, grease is, is uh, these yeah. these wipes too, and uh, yeah. unfortunately they're too prevalent. But Anyway, and the other thing is, is uh, uh, would the same policy be true where anybody wants to use a compost does have to have a sixty-five dollar correct uh, permit yes. fee to enter yes. into that? Yes. Now, we can get that spit out on the front right now. You know, so. Uh, but those are my comments. Like I say, the biggest one is, is if we start sending out dirty garbage, are we going to get penalized for it? Well, um, in which case, so I have we an are, answer to that. Are, you do. Yes. I have an Good answer to that. Okay. So, Kevin asked the question, what about contaminated loads? Do we get rejected? There are eight towns and 26 public and private schools in the Franklin County area that are utilizing this. There are three different haulers in use, but it's still much worth noting that the loads do not generally get rejected. It doesn't happen, unquote. Mountain, uh, Martin's Farm does get contamination, so they actually pick through each incoming load remove what they can, and then they have several processes to remove the contamination at the end of the compost process. Good. Okay. The flies, I don't know. Okay. Sorry. Well, <laughs> the, yeah, there is houses very close up right. there. So. Lori, would you like to come up? Oh. You need to um, come up and speak to the... I was just the... Bruce finish, but oh. thank you. Yeah, no, okay. but I think uh, Lori's going to answer some of Bruce's questions. So. Oh. I'm going to tell you what I so I, um, Lori, why don't you introduce yourself as a member of the Energy Committee? Uh, yes, Lori Busada, and, uh, Energy Committee. So I talked to the people at um, Triple T, T Trucking mm -hmm. and talked about the summer and the compost, and they mentioned that since we have some of our own leaf and yard waste that we could cover over the compost, especially maybe on a Saturday afternoon. So that's one thing that will take, keep the flies down. If we just throw on some leaves or a, dirt, a pile of dirt on the compost bin. And the other thing that I would mention as far as education, not that it's going to be a magic bullet, but uh, members of the Energy Committee and anybody else out there who's interested in composting are going to be out there the first month or so um, and have a table at town meeting and do, try and do some education. So. I think um, it will catch on after a while. Well, one of the questions that I had, well, first of all, because Bruce says that, or Kevin said that it's going to be an enclosed container, so you wouldn't necessarily need to put leaves on it because no, it's closed. If, I mean, if there were, oh. you know, if there were um, a, a problem with flies, that's right. one way you can just And, and any, any type them. of spillage, sure. just so anybody's aware, it's actually not going to be on the pavement where we're going to be putting this dumpster. It's going to be right over where we normally put the leaves. The composting of the leaves so if there is any spillage per se that's where it would go um so that's an easy cover-up you know be able to just go ahead and take some material well, put it in there i think actually kevin um i think it would be a good practice in this warmer months just to, since it's going to be right there anyway mm -hmm. just before we close up at the end of the like saturdays you do put a layer of um, leaves and stuff on the top and that will prevent the flies from. I see what you're saying, uh, inside the thing. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. you just, you just no, throw no, understood. them in and understood. cover it because it's right there anyway. Yeah. But and, it'll, and it'll be all part of it. So, yeah, no, understood. I mean, I just feel like that would be a best practice kind of thing. And then there's no question that the, that the flies aren't going to breed because mm -hmm. they can't. Sure. And, and, and it's gone in, the, in a week's time anyway. 
So who's going to do that? I'm assuming the dumpster is fairly high, and uh, do we have an equipment Well, Well, that will operating? be part oh. of the job of the dump attendants. We'll figure oh. something out, it's Bruce. Not, okay. It's not I'm not talking about customers oh, it's coming not like in. The, uh, okay. no. no. So there's okay. one over by Frontier and um, at Deerfield Elementary. Oh. It's brown. It says Triple T on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it's just a small walk-up one. Oh. Okay. It's got the little side door, and then it's got the, the big flip-up so they can grab it and okay. chunk Thank it. And but if, if it people... sounds like a no-brainer if, if we can keep it. Keep people. Yeah, that's people. what I'm hoping. Yeah, but you know, that's, well, but here's we'll, the thing: is nice part about this is worst worst case scenario, if this falls through, um, I haven't seen where where we're like locked into a well. You have to do this for the next three years, you know. So there is there is no commitment, oh. hard commitment per se. So oh, it, so oh, so if something falls through, say yeah. okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. We tried it and it didn't work. But again, with it with the uh, the success rate of where it is, I I feel very comfortable with it. Um, and again, you know, there's with all the other places, very specifically with the flies, yeah. um, I can ask ask around. What do you guys do? Yeah, yeah so, but putting the leaves in is such sure, a simple sure. solution. Right. But again, I'll utilize the people that are doing it right now to find out if they have a problem with it, and if they do, what do they do? Right. That'll give me just more more well, options. Well, you can put down uh, like lime, but why buy anything? Right now, we have the no. leaves okay. right there, and yeah. the and the you just throw them on. The only reason I, mean, I ask like in a manure pile, you, right. you yeah. what you do is you throw the lime down, and it makes. The only reason I ask it, it because it was problems yeah. over in our neighborhood. As a matter of fact, with some of the uh, uh, composting bins. Yeah. Well, what I was going to say is that you know, I think composting is a great idea, yeah. but I there are people who throw papers and disposable or not disposable, but biodegradable plastics and stuff like that. But I think they're a little inconsiderate because they don't cover it. And then when the wind blows, the papers are in the neighbor's yards yeah. or in the road and stuff like that. So if you do do that, you need to cover everything. Also, so those like, um, eggs of the of the flies are laid there, and they're not going anywhere. They are allowed to hatch out. Yeah. Well, this, get a chicken. I think they eat those. Yeah, <laughs> they do. Chicky Chicky Sally is one, are very effective as my chicken. But listen, yeah. um, the... Know. Um, by by removing it every week, you you're interrupting the uh, incubation period. Okay, that's fine. Okay. And and getting rid of them. All right. So Thank so you. we have a motion was seconded, and we had some discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Kevin, I just want to thank you because time, um, Diana, we, haven't, you we haven't had enough time to really discuss what our vision is for this Deerfield 2030, but we are truly trying to be more sustainable and do the right thing and cut our operational expenses. And by you doing this, you are really making an effort to cut our operational expenses, but you're also trying to do something that's more sustainable. So, yeah. well, Like I said, I'd love to be able to take all the credit, but... Yeah, but you were so easy to work. <laughs> I know, well, Kevin. You're really nice. Okay. Um, start but I just for, want you start to start looking for I'm, electric snow plows. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm really I'll happy. Thank you. And Lori and Rini, thank you very much for coming up with the idea. Next. What next? So you signed both of those? No, I didn't sign any of them yet. Sign the I will. please. So those can go back to the solid waste district. Uh, Lili, were you here for anything in particular? Did you? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for coming. And Bruce, thanks for raising your concerns because we want to make sure everything gets addressed. So I appreciate that. There's only a spot for me to sign on this. I believe, yes, yes so just the check. Yeah. We, you're we, going to vote. Thank you. Thank you. You're on the hook. Yep. I can do that. Next item is discussion and decisions on the finalized articles for the annual election warrant, the debt exclusion vote, wastewater treatment plant, Frontiers Capital Plan, and the Franklin County Technical School Capital. Yeah, wow. so, I know. So the Finance Committee had asked, um, you know, by way of, I think through the finance team, the Board of Selectmen to consider um, putting on the annual election warrant some debt exclusion votes. And those debt exclusion votes that have been discussed so far have been the wastewater treatment plant vote, um, the Frontier Capital Plan, and the Franklin County Technical School Capital. I'm not sure that's actually been discussed by you guys, but that the, the Finance Committee had, had talked about that. So I met with um, Barbara and Brenda to try to get a sense of um, the timing of the, uh, the election and, and the timing of these the other processes that have to happen, most specifically around the Frontier Capital Plan vote that, that still need to occur. 
So we would right now recommend if you're if you want to debt exclude these things that you can for the annual uh, election which occurs on uh, in the first week of May that we would recommend that you could put the the Franklin County Tech School capital that's about an annual carrying cost of about twenty thousand dollars so if you're interested in, in thinking of debt excluding that a year ago uh, the tech school did a capital project and they they took it through the correct process they had to go to a uh, town meeting vote and then there had to be a ballot vote and all, after all that's completed then the town can take it to a debt exclusion vote so in this year's budget they did the tech school did have some capital costs that you the town could have excluded so that's the first thing. The second one is that, that is ready is the wastewater treatment. Um, we can't debt exclude, we've, we've determined, for a project that has not been authorized. So you can only debt exclude for the million dollar project. So we would articulate that in the debt exclusion question, which I'll present to you next week if no, you decide to. Yeah, so it was a million, uh, the debt exclusion for the million dollars was what was already uh, voted on at a special town meeting. We can't do that at the one at annual town meeting. Correct. Okay. Right. Because right. we, right, right. So we'd be authorizing the, the million. Um, and, and so the project, uh, when you do a debt exclusion vote, you specifically cannot put in the project amount. You just put the project description. Wow. So we would put in what the amount, what the description was, the clarifier. We would yep. use the same project description we used in the town meeting vote. How, what do we do if, it, if you do that and you put it on a ballot and it fails? Well, it's we not only that. It. It's not only that. I mean, I thought, number one, we have the potential of, of encompassing that into the USDA grant. Number two, um, the capital uh, reserves for the sewer um, district or the sewer operation is available in the fall. And I mean, I don't feel like we should be debt excluding $250,000, which is what the town. My concern is that if it fails, I, I just don't know the, the, the ramifications. It, How do you come back to it, fund it? It doesn't matter. If, it fa if the debt exclusion fails at this point, yep. Kip, you are going to spend, presumably spend the million dollars. So you're not, you just aren't going to debt no exclude choice. it. You're okay. just going to, so you just have to pay the debt so within the levy. it's to do it, just how it was, okay. Right. right. You just would have to pay back the debt within the levy. Um, and does Frontier, how is Frontier, what's so, Frontier? And so deal? let me talk to you about Frontier a little. So Frontier still has, they're still at the very beginning of the process that I just talked about the tech school did. So they haven't even, frankly, Frontier, the uh, school committee hasn't even voted the capital plan yet. They haven't voted to send that vote to you or to town meeting. My understanding is they're waiting till around the 1st of April to do that so that all the town meetings, there's a staff statute that says that you have after they give you that notice I think you have about 45 days to call a town meeting if you want to disapprove it if you don't plan to disapprove it you don't have to have a town meeting and by the fact of not having the vote it would be a presumption of approving it there still is another process presuming the town approved it either through that vote or a presumption that you have to take to a ballot vote. So you still have to take the same question to a ballot vote as well. So presuming you did the annual town meeting vote, you know, question then and it wasn't disapproved and then you put, and, and, and excuse me, let me rephrase. It isn't the town that has to put it on a debt exclusion vote. It's the school. The school committee has to call the question. The school committee has to talk to the, to the town clerk, and they have to call a special election through Mass General Law Chapter 70 or 71. I have the reference here. But basically, it's, it's outlined in the statute that the school actually has to call the question, and it has to be a separate question with no other, you know, you can't make it contingent on an exclusion. If that were to pass, then you could go for debt exclusion following for that capital. Same question, what happens if it does pass and then it doesn't pass the debt exclusion? Same same answer. If it passes and it doesn't pass a debt exclusion, then your capital assessment it. each year could not be excluded. It'd have to be paid within the levy. And, and, and since we don't have anything solid, number one, I don't feel comfortable doing this. I, 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 when, when you ask people 
to vote for debt exclusion, you have to have a basis, a good basis mm -hmm. of an argument, and you have to have solid figures. We don't have solid figures for the sewer. If we, if we get the grant, it's a, a amount up to 400, I mean, four and a half million dollars and 2% loan for the rest, that makes a huge difference. If we get $2 million, then we gotta figure out what we're gonna win. If we get nothing, we still have to figure out what we're doing. So I'm, I feel very uncomfortable going to people and saying, oh, debt exclude this, when we have no idea what we're doing at this point because we don't have solid financial figures. Well, we don't even have, yeah. And, and the same as Frontier. I, I'm not saying that people aren't gonna support what is happening at Frontier for capital improvement, but you don't go and issue, ask people to issue a blank check without having solid arguments for what you're asking for. And, and, and the million dollars, the only thing we have is a million dollars, which sounds, it is a lot of money, but we, we, are, we know we have to do that one way or the other. We can cover it relatively, I mean, under short-term loans right now, and we can figure something out as once we know what's happening and we have a real timeline with our repairs. It's not that we're not going to do it, and it's not that the, it's not hanging out there, but how we do it over the length of time is a huge factor. And, I mean, we've raised people's rates on purpose to generate a capital reserve and to be, you know, not to be the lowest in the state. So people are already paying. So to me, unless you have a solid argument for what you're gonna do and why you're gonna do it, I mean, I would, even myself, I think I would vote no, just because, you know, we don't have our act together. I, I don't, I think it's wrong to do that. I, I totally agree with that. Oh, okay. I thought you wanted to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was arguing with you. Okay, no problem. Well, it is kind of like home. I didn't say a darn thing in this argument either. <laughs> okay. Um, the only question that I have is, um, I, I am aware that in, with the frontier thing, it, it only takes a, a number of towns. It is three out of the four that have to approve it, or no? Wrong. No, it has to be four out of the four this time. Oh, it has right. to be four Because the intermunicipal agreement, my understanding, is uh -huh. silent on capital, which means you have to take it back to all four towns. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, um, and, and yeah, you, you don't, as I, 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 just to be clear, you don't, you, you are not, the town is not responsible to take that debt, ex, that, excuse me, not the debt exclusion vote, but the frontier uh, vote that has to go to the ballot to, for the approval has to be called by the school. So we, we couldn't even have a debt exclusion vote now because none of that has occurred. So we can't debt exclude a project that well, hasn't really been voted or discussed. So I agree with you. I'm just saying. We, Okay. To emphasize, I just feel we uncomfortable. Can't, we can't do that. When I, when I have an argument or stand up and say, I think it's really important you support this, you know, I try to, I, mm -hmm. I really feel it's important that I have my act together. And I can tell you right now, we don't have our act together on this. So <laughs> I, I'm not going to ask people to vote for something. Okay. So, and just so you know, so this, so would, is that also for the, for the tech school? Because that's, that's a small well, that's amount. Such a small but that's, amount. I feel like we can cover it in our operation and budget. Okay. Right. At this point, okay. If at a later date, there's no. From what I understand on this debt exclusion business, if we choose at a later date to do a debt exclusion for Pine, for Frontier, we can just roll in Franklin. Tech, you could right? do it at the same time. I, I That's would correct. rather do it at the same time. Okay. Again, I, I don't want people to ask people to do something when when we really don't have the full picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so the next item on our agenda is to review the FY20 budget. You want um, to go? The, and I guess I just wanted, I put that on. Trevor had asked um, me to put this on the agenda, and I know he said he was going to be late. He shouldn't be here any time. And um, so just so you know that, I didn't have right. anything particular. I talked to Skip today, and he said that, um, I mean, I think you guys are in step with them. I think you you you're fairly you know you you're fairly aware of what they voted and everything that they've supported and discussed at this point. I don't think there's any differences unless you know you tell me otherwise. If there's things that that you think should be in the budget that you've you understand that they've removed or anything, because I don't um, I don't think that's the case. They've pretty much supported I think everything. They at this have. Point. Um, I I don't really have. Um, 
any big issues with any items on there. I wish that uh, some of the uh, budgets didn't have to increase. I mean, there are some things I do understand, but there are other things that, you know, I'm not sure what the percentages of uh, different uh, departments that when it gets turned back over and recertified. So to me, it's no different than like SCIMS with their reserve um, funds. It's just either, you know, being super cautious or over taxation. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think the, the decisions you'll have to make probably just in the next couple weeks. So the finance committee is going to meet uh, next Tuesday, and I believe they're pretty, that will be their final, you know, they're really going to like finalize at that point, if I understand correctly. You'll meet again after the day after next Wednesday, and then I'd had you scheduled for the following Wednesday so we could try to wrap up the annual town meeting, uh, you know, draft and yeah. things. Okay. So I think the only thing you'd be thinking about maybe is if you, you know, I don't, I don't know about the request to fund some capital stabilization and things like that 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 may be coming out of different different. I guess funds I want to make sure like I see that. the total before. Right, we exactly. That's vote what I figured. You'd want to do that after. I, right. I know. Um, I voted on the capital improvement committee to. Um, do a transfer to the stabilization account, but it, because I think that's be, uh, good best practices, and we should be doing it in years that we are not stressed more than normal stress. But um, I, you know, how much of that 250, 100 percent, or 50 percent, or whatever, or right. none, really depends on our bottom line. You know, right. can we balance our budget? So um, I right. would like to build up the capital improvement um, stabilization account as we had in the last couple of years, but um, mm -hmm. I don't want to make cuts to the operational budget either, so um, I, I kind of just want to wait. My big picture thinking on some of these things is that with our budget, you know, it's kind of like your income. We, um, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense to put money in my savings account when I have to borrow money to pay my bills. You know, that kind of thing. I think well, I, I, the problem is you put it into the stabilization because right. you, well, I was really, we really got freaked out in 2009. I mean, we didn't, you know, nobody got pay raises, nobody got steps, nobody, I mean, we, nobody got laid off and we made it through. but. There was a huge hit to our receipts, oh, and, and, I, and, and I understand and that. So, but if you, and we went several years with no capital. It's true, but if you look at look where our taxes have gone in the last I eight years, from 2009, 2010 to now, I mean we're, we're hauling in another. I just I think the last time it was almost three million dollars more in those short years. I mean, ten years is a long wow. time, but still. Well, Anyways. but as you know, yep. if you have a leaky roof. Yeah, to be able to exactly, fix it. exactly. So that's yep. kind of what it's for. Okay. Um, do you want to wait more on that budget till Trevor gets here? And then we In case he had any other things, you that would be great. Sign in uh, the refunding loan paperwork for the school okay. roof ban per treasurer. Okay. So you have that in front of you, that packet. So that's from Barbara, and she explained to you what the, um, where some, there were some monies that were applied to that, and then the net uh, was refunded into. Uh, that loan and it was put out to bid and she's given you that information on the cover sheet. Um, I make a motion that um, we follow uh, Brenda, uh, Brenda's, Barbara. Barbara's recommendation, not Brenda. Brenda recommended this, right? the school this, right? roof ban refunding. Um, Brenda knows about this, right, Diana? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let's take a minute and I'll sign these. Is it okay to have only two signatures on here? Sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I guess, you know, we can hopefully maybe Trevor can sign when he gets here. It might be, I'm sure it's fine to have a majority, but.
-hmm. Thank you. Uh, under new business, uh, the ZBA is requesting comments for our Charles Beto for a hearing on March 21st. Um, I'm not really sure what, what um, just looking at it, what the concerns might be. Um, I read, I, let's see. What they're seeking is. They want the setback to go from 10 feet to 3 feet. 3 feet on a pre-existing grandfathered law. But for the purpose of construction of a new addition and remodeling of an existing garage with a second floor. So it looks like it's, they're increasing it. I don't know how big it is, but. Wow. I guess that uh, the only thing I could suggest is that uh, if there's any butters or people near this property, at 117 Old Main Street, Deerfield, if you have any objections to why this shouldn't happen, to uh, go to the ZBA hearing tomorrow evening and voice your concerns, but I don't, uh, I guess I don't have any real objections to it. No, because there's still um, quite a lot of I mean, it's not uh, the only covering thing that, up the percentage of the lot. The only thing that I can say is if, if the current house is 10 feet away, I, I wouldn't think it's a good precedent to say, okay, now you can go within three feet of the property line just because they want a bigger addition. They could go in a different direction. Uh, but if the house is already within three feet and they just want to go up or go in a different direction, but that's not really our decision. No, that would be less a ZBA concern. Yep. I mean, I, I don't really have, I don't think there's any, anything from a selectman's point of view. No, I, I can go tomorrow and voice my opinion there, but I, I don't really have any. Um, okay. I don't see anything okay. for this board to act on that. Um, was there a, something just, for us just, to? Just, um, Diana, can you make sure that you put no comment or um, <coughs> um, not, no um, concerns that we're aware of or something like that? Just just so they know that we responded, mm -hmm. that's all. I, I put I, no I, apparent concerns. Right. Perfect. I just, I, I, I don't, I am very appreciative that there is, they're soliciting comments, so. I don't want it to look like we didn't respond. Okay. Okay. The next item is a planning board request for comments from the VESH hearing dated April 8th. I believe that is uh, an addition to the VETS hospital on Route 5. Mm -hmm. I've kind of looked it over. I, it is a, a large addition, uh, but I don't really have any issue with that as well. I, I don't either. All um, the engineering has been done for the storm water and everything. Yep. So. Okay. Nothing with that either, Diane. Okay. Okay. Um, Deerfield 2030, limiting or capping cannabis and solar in Deerfield. Well, um, I don't get the connection. Well, the idea is how how do you develop sustainably in um, be between now and 2030? You know, the next 10 years make um, impor are important, and so. Um, I actually saw John Waite in the grocery store, and he wanted to let me know that um, they wanted to look at the solar and, and um, marijuana bylaws and, and zoning based on, you know, their experiences they just had. So um, I know we, had, by petition, had gotten some um, something um, in, and uh, based on the Dollar General um, activity, and. So it made sense that um, I, I don't think we have more than three or four, um, anything in the pipeline of more than three or four. So I, I suggested we just cap um, um, marijuana applications and cap 
solar farm applications until our zoning is reviewed this summer and, and plan to work with the planning board to review the uh, loopholes in our zoning and correct based on the experience that they've had, um, all the activity they had in the last few months um, and, and have a special town meeting. We usually have a special town meeting in the fall to um, um, you know, fix anything in the budget at once our um, you know, free cash has been certified. So in case we have to fix something in the budget. So it's made sense to me to work with the planning board in a, in a fairly quick turnaround. I mean, you know, this is March, so we're talking about the end of September or October. Um, but this would give the planning board and, and the select board a chance to do any review of our zoning and bylaws and um, bring them to town meeting in the fall. Um, being involved with that, uh, as far as the solar goes in Deerfield, I... Do you think we have, uh, do you know if we have, how many we have? I mean, I don't want to, I, I don't want to affect any applications that right. are happening. Right. But I, you had brought it up in the past that, you know, there was a lot of loopholes and it just made sense. Well, the solar... That we have some kind of review. Right. The solar one, um, the, I think one of the stumbling things is there was a, a lot of discussion, like when we talk about megawatts, about how much power it puts out. And, you know, the, the town determines the size uh, by megawatts. Uh, two megawatts is large. Anything up to six megawatts is extra large and because of the size. And I think that uh, the conversation with the uh, planning board, and I think the energy uh, co committee could weigh in on this, is I don't think that we should really be so concerned as how powerful these things are because technology constantly changes. Who knows in 10 years, this little piece of paper might produce as much electricity as a giant panel today. What I think was important, what I've heard from citizens is, you know, when there's an objection to it, it's because of the size, you know, the visual thing. And, and so those are different areas that we can talk about. Um, you know, we had another group of uh, citizens that were very much pro for this. Um, solar field because they felt that it would be the best neighbor for them, their neighborhood, for the next 20 or 25 years. Um, but it, so there was definitely some work that needs to get done as far as adjusting our bylaws for solar, but it didn't seem like there was a big problem. It was more of a problem for the applicants because of the way we determined the size. Uh, but when it comes to the, to the uh, marijuana growing facilities, um, that's why I, w I brought it up last meeting to think about a moratorium because, you know, as we developed our plans and all our bylaws, you know, the target was constantly moving. You know, one week the rules were this and then they changed and stuff like that. And through this process, we've seen a number of different variables come up. And um, even myself, I made an argument um, for a marijuana establishment that was within 500 feet of a day, a child care facility. And my argument was that even though the, the property lines were within 500 feet, you know, the age of these children generally were under five years old and they would have to get out of the facility, cross the road, cross railroad tracks, scale an eight foot fence with, you know, barbed wire on it and then travel another quarter of a mile to this facility. And I just didn't think that that was that much of a uh, detriment or you know or hazard to those children and yet on other ones we've seen where you know the planning board was sitting here and there were three lawyers from the applicants and you know tell basically dictating to us how they can do this and, and manipulate our bylaws and stuff and so I'm trying to weigh the balance of you know it, it seems to be a, a general consensus that the people of this town wanted to stay kind of small and rural and not to see a lot of large buildings in the fields. And uh, I, I raised an opinion that, uh, you know, I was upset as a taxpayer that I've paid this money into protecting open farmland. And now all of a sudden we, we don't have 4,000 square foot buildings or 10,000 square, you know, we have 80 and 90 and 100,000 square foot buildings going up, you know, and they use an agricultural exemption to get around building codes and a lot of other things. And all of a sudden they can turn around and sell it to a marijuana farm. And I think that's where we need, it isn't about stopping marijuana. It's about understanding what our rules are and how we apply them and how we can protect the community for that. 
Well, you know? so I don't want to use the moratorium. We don't want to do that. What we want to do is just take a, a, like a cap, temporary cap, so that we can review the situations like that to address situations. But, but um, the, the reason, the reason I feel that a cap wouldn't work in this instance is because, you know, let's just say we pick a number of four, okay? Four, no more four. So that means two more times we can get burned, you know? And what I'm, what I'm suggesting well, is that do if you we- have, Do you know how many are out there? Diana, I, how, do you know how many applications we We don't really we know. Have? I don't think anybody's actually made an well, application yet. Well, we have, well, in terms for what? Um, Marijuana uh, growth facilities. Well, we just, the planning board just approved two. One. Two, two, well, two, the, the, right. A cultivation and a retail. Right. And you have um, been approached by, again, I think, I can't remember the company, one of them, the Mr. Plotkin company to go to revisit the marijuana, um, excuse me, the mar the medical. Right. Um, he, they want to come back to you for medical. So, right. but other than that, I don't, I'm not aware of any others. Well, it, do you, know, do you see what I'm saying? I, I don't. I don't really want to stifle it in any way. I'm just trying to say we know that we have an issue here, and it takes us time to straighten it out. I mean, the planning board meets once a month, and you know, lately our meetings have been very time, you know, very filled with time-consuming projects. So we don't really get to talk about a lot of these things. And what happens if somebody comes in and hands us this application? It doesn't matter what we decide next week because. They've already submitted their well, application. Yes, but as a select board, we can say we're not going to prove we're not going to approve any more host agreements until we, um, you know, or we could say we're only going to do one more before right. um, the planning board has a chance to review the bylaws. That's I mean the zoning. Okay. I, I I feel that by setting a cap, us as a select board setting a cap, we're allowing the planning board time to review what's, what changes we might be interested in. Well, but, but if you set, like I said, if you set a cap at four and we have two, that's two more times that the same thing could happen. And we don't, we're, we're not set up for it. Yeah, and, and you know, I think yep. I think either one of these things. So I'm sorry, I'm just quickly looking, but I think anytime you're going to change, you know, I, again, I'm not depending on where you land, but certainly a moratorium. That's I a, know that's you a, cannot do that. We're not right, doing that. That's a zoning okay. one. So basically, that would be just like a land use change, so just like a zoning change. So anything even you want. Even if you do a temporary moratorium, yep. doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. I'm looking at a temporary moratorium. A bunch of towns have do done that. it, but it's all gone through zoning. You know, there that's are towns these. that have done temporary moratoriums on recreational marijuana establishments. The same, all the reasoning you're saying, but all of them have gone through town meeting votes for zoning changes, just like if you were to do right. a regular zoning change. And right. I don't know about the cap and how you came up with the, first, the cap initially, but I would imagine if it's codified somewhere, if it's in writing, you have to you know, undo it the same way you put it in. I don't know exactly how you did that. If that's well, a, if that's I mean, a I was just throwing it out there as yeah. an opportunity to just, say just we're, we're, this would be an incentive for the planning board to focus on you know, the zoning. And it's only temporary. If someone wants to take us to court on it, okay, fine. But I, I think it's important that we at least support the planning board in the opportunity to do some rezoning review. Okay. Well, so I, that you I, can I, fix I don't. so they can fix some of these things that you're concerned about. I mean, I felt you had valid concerns. And I and I feel like so I guess I would make a motion that um, we would do a temporary um, cap on further applications um, until the fall, a fall town meeting. But how many? You know. Well, that's what we were just discussing. I, you know, if we don't have more, you know, three I mean, or four, I still think, th you know, if we do one more, or I mean, well, that's reasonable. Why don't we? Why don't we not take any action right now because we don't have anything in front of us. If all of a sudden we get another one. Then we can say, okay, now we've got one more. Now we should maybe. Well, except ahead. if you just if you impose a cap at the time that you get an application, I think they can say, oh, oh no. yeah, well, I'm not we get a problem. Stop. I'm not saying to but stop if we, that one. But if we discuss a cap or we agree on a cap tonight, then if someone comes next week, well, too bad. We we would like you to resubmit in the fall or something. I mean, we have okay. some basis to say. We, we had a serious discussion, and right. we felt that the planning board had had to have some support in this. What's the number that you'd want to put on? And, and before you do that, 
I was only talking about, you know, grow facilities and stuff like that. Well, yeah, so, because we already have a cap on the retail. Right. Well. We do. We do. Okay. Clearly. It's only the area. I, I have an idea. I think it might be helpful. <clears throat> well, it's just, I was thinking it would give incentive for the planning board to actually focus on zoning because so, there's a few things. But I think that you might be li liable for some sort of a suit if you create an arbitrary cap. But what if you were to look at it as <clears throat> what you're really trying to do is managing the process. And so rather than put on an arbitrary cap, you say, at any point we can only deal with one at a time. So in effect, you're giving the planning board the opportunity to deal with one at a time. And what you're doing is you're adjusting your process. You're not putting on a cap. Um, and you're not, you know, putting on a moratorium. But what you're doing is you're saying this is the way our town is going to handle this process until we are, uh, until we change how we handle the process. I don't know. I mean, it's just a thought yeah. rather than yeah. changing a bylaw or... No, I was saying we, we as a select board just say we're not going to entertain more than one more host agreement. But then you're making a decision that, that you're only, you know, you're creating a cap that for any other limitations we voted on as a town and all that, you know, all the stuff about like the number of retail versus blah, blah, blah. Whereas if what you're doing is you're talking about this is the process of how things will flow through in this town. We are not limiting anything except to say that our planning board can only have one application before it in each of these areas at any given time. But, but one of the reasons that that might not work is because a couple of them, the planning board's been dealing with them for over a year. So, you know, if somebody comes... Well, then you have your effective... Then you effectively have... What yeah. you're looking for is what I'm saying. It, yeah. Depending on how long it takes. I was just wondering board. about that. Yeah. That makes sense, Lily. I'm just I'm wondering yeah. if legally. So I mean, if then you can more. undo it yeah. once the planning board, once you guys have you know had right. the opportunity based on the experience that you've had, you can remove that process. You can accelerate the process or whatever, but look right. at it as a process and not uh, a cap. It was just a thought. Yeah. Actually, it's thank you. Good, yeah. thank you. Bruce, is, isn't there a time limit upon the time an application is made to the time the planning board has to act? So you can't just randomly not correct accept that. Application. Well, right, so you like can the, ask questions, and you well, could, well, if you went with this scenario, yeah, right. But if 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 we go down that road, uh, you know, a lot of times these response. projects take a long time. You know, we always ask the applicants for extensions, and that's why it goes Which time is, and time again. Is you have to, otherwise, you oh, lose right, you, you lose it. Time. And, and if we've never had it happen, but we've discussed it, if an applicant chooses not to do it, then we would just deny it based on we don't have enough information. So, you know, usually they're well, pretty good. Well, um, I think since we're meeting next week, I, I, maybe we should get some legal, you know, real legal advice on this um, to find out because I'm not sure, Lily, that, that it, I well, like it. <laughs> <laughs> It is, but we're gonna, and, we're, and we'll ask the lawyer. Yeah, yeah but, Diane, but uh, you I'm, know exactly what we're trying to yeah, figure out. Yeah. You know, whether whatever you want to call it, limiting just, them, moratorium, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Just we just want to have we, some time. Yeah. We want to have um, uh, till like the end of September or October. You know, when we would have a fall meeting um, to review the zoning, and that I would think. give the planning board a timeline and incentive to to yeah. look at all the zoning that they have. That would be then. helpful. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, since we've got all those things, uh, Diana, do you want to give us your weekly sure, project so I, updates? Sure, so I included it in, I think I included a copy just quickly. So we're, we're oh, the annual retirement report. So I just got, Pat, um, I, think, I think she sent me that this morning. So um, we have a draft of your report, actually, which I will review and send out to you. And then um, if we could approve it next week, I think it'll be fine, March 27th. So is that okay. the one that Trevor handed I out? Think, it, yeah. I think I, you've seen a draft. I think it's just I been wordsmithed a bit. When so. did we get the, uh, the EMS building? Wasn't that was just completed this last spring, but that wasn't in there. Yeah, that wasn't even included. Yeah. Okay. So but I, that's, that I made a note. That was in 2018? Yeah. Okay. We know we I definitely want to get that in there. I think we we, we, opened, we went in there uh, in June. 
Okay. Well, Carolyn has made some updates since then, so I don't know if you've seen the updated no, copy. Um, so we've we uh -oh. have added some things that we've well, just. Oh, oh yeah, I got this one as a book. I, no, what happened <laughs> is I was missing page four and five. So. Um, okay. We so have we're, to, we have to edit it down. Yeah, well, we're close though, and down. we have most of all of the other reports, oh so we're we're making good progress this is five on that. Five pages. Um, five pages. I only got three. Yes. Well, you missed two. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Um, so oh, wow. the Board of Health Regulations, we have um, found the, uh, the, the Word document and have sent that off to DJ Wilson as he agreed to take a stab at drafting the regulations so that we can prepare them for a future public hearing. Uh, in the meantime, we've had some retailers that have reached out, including Circle K, um, and they are anticipating, you know, the hearing and will be anxious to speak to you about the, the regulations once they're drafted. Uh, um, can I ask a question. Uh, I know that our health agent uh, informed me that um, through some inspections that he found that there was some uh, flavored tobacco products that uh, were being sold that were you know, banned. Correct. And um, I think, or at least I think that if, if this discovery happens again, that I'm comfortable with the health agent giving them a, a warning saying that this is wrong, but if he finds it continually happen, then find him after the fact. You know, but everybody um, should. What, what I um, asked Dick to do was to um, write up, uh, you know, right. whatever happened, you know, when he went in and sure. discovered them and put it in the file with the date and the time and, exactly. you know, all the documentation. Right. So that the next, because the first uh, offense is, I think, $100. But the second time is um, a suspension of, of selling, um, right. with, is a fine, but also the suspension of the, your, the entire tobacco license. So I actually feel very comfortable skipping the first step. Okay. And, well, and because the they, fine. yes, because right. they, they pulled them right away. Right. And, and I think there was some misunderstanding. And because, that's fine. And that's why um, I felt that it was good yeah. that he just go and, and warn them. And, right. And them, yeah. But um, w again, we noted that we do not have any ticket books. So, Diana, if you could order ticket book for Dick to write an actual violation ticket, would be wonderful. Can't get anything from the police you department? Can't, you can't write the, a fine if you have no ticket book for the fine. So there's a special thing that you have to go through. You have to have some sort of stuff on it to address the fine. So that was one of the reasons I said, just document it, put it in the file, because we don't have a book. I'm sorry, I didn't expect it to be so long. Go, keep going. Well, you know, Diana had offered to do it, and I know it's one of those things that always gets lost in the shuffle, but we could have collected a hundred bucks if we had the books that would have paid for some of the printing. So, if you can do it, I'd really appreciate it. <clears throat> we um, got the the we had a, a green communities grant we have out there, and it's um, wrapping up in May. And part of it is to do boilers at the elementary school. We had that bid out, and we got the bid results this week. Um, I don't know if I had, I thought I had attached them, but. Um, we have to go back and look at it because unfortunately the bids all came in higher, the base bids came in higher. So we have about 100, I believe it's 130,000 in the project, or 132. And I think the highest bid, or the lowest base bid was 138, and then we had an add-on to that. So we're just short a little bit, but anyway, I have a meeting with Bob Lesko and, and the, um, and the gentleman at Universal Electric that's wor working on the green communities, you know, the, the utility stuff. Um, we'll get that straight out, but I just want to okay. let you know. Do you know how many bids he got? We got four bids. Yeah. So, so um, we're short. It sounds like we're short six thousand. About eight thousand, I think. Eight thousand. Yeah, eight thousand. But we're gonna we gotta look at the spec the specs because of the add on. There was a lot of differential in the add on, so I need to ensure that the specifications were because I I did rely on them to to craft the technical part, and then I put it in form. Um, but because the bidders were so, uh, there was such a differential between the add-on, um, I need to make sure that the specifications were clear, because if not, we may have to, to re-bid. So I, I hope we can do it as quickly as possible, but Were I just there multiple to keep you in the loop. specifications from multiple vendors? 
No, we just had one. No, we okay. only had one set of okay. technical specifications, but okay. I just want to make sure we didn't have any questions about addendums. We did a walkthrough, um, but clearly there was, uh, you know, some misunderstanding about the specifications because, like I said, two vendors bid something very, very low, and two bid, two vendors bid something very high, and they were both around the same number. So we're just trying to figure that out. So I just want to let you know. Can never be easy. Um, anyway, the uh, municipal IT project is wrapped up now. We actually submitted the closeout paperwork to the grant to the funder agency. We have $10,000 left um, that was unspent, and they've told us that we can go ahead and just spend that on the next phase of our IT project. So we're really excited that we can wow. just take that. And that, This is the state agency? This is the EOPS, oh, wow. yeah, the Executive Office of Technical. Um, so they said go ahead and spend that, and then they will be looking forward to getting an IT grant from us in August as well. They would be willing to entertain another phase. They're very excited that we put together a technology plan and that we're looking at policies and we dealt with our security issues. So, um, um, I think there's um, EOPS is coming out with some kind of um, a cybersecurity um, like minimum minimums of what you do, right. and so I'll try to chase that down to you. Okay. So that'd be great. I know the Mass State Police. I had tried to get us to, you know, be the pilot, one of the pilots, where they were going to come out and work okay. with us, but um, th they might actually get funded in this next budget. So I'll try to find out if they're still interested in us, and um, but find out what the minimum is because we certainly want to to work with the state police on what the what their outreach is the public outreach on cybersecurity so absolutely i'll follow up on that I, it's too bad i had just had the homeland security meeting yesterday i should have followed up on it with the guy there um we're coming close to wrapping up our solar development well i shouldn't i don't want to say that 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 was that'd be presumptuous we're not we're not necessarily close but we we have um, met with the vendors and we've graded the vendors. We the subcommittee needs to come back together and make our come to terms on our final recommendations. The only uh, pro problem we're having is that um, the smart the smart program, which we have asked vendors to base their price bids on, um, is not available basically to these vendors right now for our project. So they're basically, the, the money, the cost side of things is, is speculative. It's not been, been determined yet. So is we're this, still. Is this solar for the landfill? Yeah, this is for the solar landfill project. How, fill me in a little bit more as to what, what's the details of this? Are we still looking to have a vendor build this for us or are we leasing property to a an individual uh, corporation. I I understand. Well, I think that there the proposals, I believe, may have two different sort of avenues of things. So I don't want to. I I think that will be part of the recommendation. But the idea was that we are basically turning over this asset to a developer to build to build the project and yes that we would get a pilot for the uh, for the energy and that there would be a lease agreement as well for the land underneath okay. but the town's not involved with the construction or the paying of the facility at all which just we're we're going to be landlords we're going to lease the building I mean lease the land to them for a certain period of time we'll get whatever pilot payment and we should get a, a percentage if we can uh, whatever SREC credits that we can get like we do from the, the other river. one the correct other one, so. that would be the typical okay. process right. yes so we'll That's more fine. to be so the subcommittee um is is three energy committee members myself and kevin scarborough and uh, we will make a, uh, a a recommendation to the energy the full energy committee and then to the select board who who will award and make the de final decision but all of that is to come, so yeah. it's it hopefully will be shortly. During any of these discussions, has anything come up about the solar field at the old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant? If the, any of the corrections have been made? Yes. To yes, yes, it has come up. It has. Yes, it has. So we have found out that what Kevin found out is some of the some of the problem with the energy not being produced appropriately was the inverters kept uh, burning out. So he's communicated with. 
I don't know if it was SWCA, some, one of the companies that was involved in it, and they are going to replace those, is my understanding. So the other thing is because we got the grant um, to pay for the energy consultant uh, to do the solar uh, landfill, we still had money that the town had actually budgeted to investigate why we were not getting our, our full um, our production out of it. So uh, we we once we get this inverter thing figured out, if it's still not correct, then we can use some of that money to pay this consultant who agreed to do it for very short money to just try to track down, you know, if things aren't working. It wasn't unclear. It was unclear to me whether you were just over promised something and under delivered, or whether there's actually a problem with you know what was put in not working properly. And I think Kevin said that he didn't think it was working properly. So, uh, I would I would think it would be wise to investigate the possibility of since the town owns that maybe selling that investment that solar field to another company and doing the same thing you know get recouping some of our money but then mm -hmm. entering into a lease agreement on the land and let them people who understand this instead of the highway superintendent and some volunteers trying to figure out how all these electronic things work. Yeah, yeah, but if it was installed incorrectly, I mean. But it's been a while. You're not going to get people to keep coming back and taking care of it. You right. Know? Well, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I'm just. Beth, Beth is up. a lawyer. So you can go after him. You go. Yeah, but she, but she was a part of that original one. I think, so it's, I don't it's think that would happen. Part of her, the reason why she's willing to do this is because it makes her mad that uh -huh. she thinks something happened. Well, uh, obviously it did, but I'm just saying if, if, you know, if there's a company, whatever it is, Bob's Electrical Company, you know, and he puts it in and stuff, and it's not working, he's not making money, so he's going to be there taking. What's happening now is, if it's not working, the town's going to spend money to do this, and it's just like, oh, you know, know. we shouldn't be in that that business. I mean, I'm all for solar. I, don't get me wrong, but it's like you, you need people who understand it to do oh, that. I agree. Know, so. I agree. Yeah. Okay. But I'm so, also mad that it got installed in all these years. We haven't been able to capitalize on it at all. Mm -hmm. I think that's ripping. You we know, we have discussed it, and I'd be happy to, to connect you into that conversation, and you can hear more specifics about it. But okay. I, I know there is more information about it. Um, and then um, we had the uh, Lisa White has been working on our public health and the age friendly designation, um, and we're ready to move that forward. And because our agenda has been so busy, um, what we've decided, Lisa and I are going to meet with Christina at the Council on Aging and start trying to move it, you know, through the uh, Council on Aging, starting to kind of build advocacy around it. And then, you know, we will bring it to you in a future agenda. But it seems like a good group to start vetting it with is the seniors and that really you know that might as well start happening um, anytime so that's what we're going to start doing with that um, transfer station attendant hiring is nearly completed we have the rep we had got um, we had a delay in getting some references but that's figured out now and we're working through that um, we need to still put the draft um, or the discussion about the frontier sewer on a future agenda I, I recognize that's still pending but I knew Trevor wasn't going to be uh, may not be here, so I wasn't sure. I wanted to wait on that. And, and all of the people that have submitted for abatements have been notified? Yes, that's okay. As far as, I mean, they'd been previously notif notified that we weren't giving any. I think we may, you know, once you, once you make a decision about what you're going to do with the frontier issue, uh, once you come to a final determination, you know, uh, people have circled back around about the abatement, so I think we'll have to reiterate what your final determination is to okay. all the residents. Um, but it would be very helpful if you could just let them know that we are still. Oh, I, oh no, I have been. If oh, okay. They've communicated with me that very much. Okay. So I've been letting them know. They know that this that you're you know having these discussions. But in the meantime, they recognize that you've said no abatements for residential, but there's still you know there's still folks that are that are interested in the discussion okay um, the complete streets policy uh, you might remember you we had a meeting about that in the late fall and we have until I think May to formally adopt it so after we get through this you know the warrant stuff in the next couple weeks then I'll bring it up 
in the early April because I want to get that you know finished and, and into that so we can be actually in the line um, to do. I'm really nervous about that so can we put that on the April 3rd agenda absolutely sure yeah yeah, yeah. it's pretty I, the draft is it's in a final draft it's a matter of adoption right, but, but yeah I, let's do that I, I think it needs to be sent to them Yes, it, has to, be, it yes, has to be. Yes, by submitted. May twenty second, I believe. Right. Correct. So I, yeah. I, 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 I think portal. it's not worth waiting. Sure. On that subject, have we ever gotten any clarification from the state as to uh, what part of uh, the common we can and cannot work on? Um, not so much the common, but I know well, Kevin that. did get a response back from District Two, outlining. They sent us a plot, I believe, or a map that showed, you know, what they believe is their. Uh, is their space so and I know um, I have a conference call with the note on Friday who's our consultant from time bond that's working on the complete streets prioritization plan um, so we I talked to Kevin and we're going to reach out to district two and start involving them in the conversation so because the there's no there there may be you know there, there might be a possibility that they might want to partner with us in some of these projects because they're also interested in complete streets exactly and I think that uh, you know it's been my general knowledge that uh, speaking with Kevin that the state has made it abundantly clear about us repairing sidewalks along Sugarloaf Street, but yet when they did some work over at the uh, post office, it just happened. Now I don't, I never heard of an explanation except for it was the federal government and they didn't care, so they just did it. I don't know, mm -hmm. but you know, I, it would sure be nice to find out if they got permission and if they did, why we can't, right. as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And that's about that's I think what I have so far. We've, I've you know you know we worked through some issues with the Hagopian easement and we did some other you know operational stuff. But I mean yep, I think this is kind of the, the big stuff that's been happening. Have we heard any more from the bakery people? I have not. No. Okay. Um, I just was wondering um, on the clarifier um, application to the USDA or the USDA application for the sewer treatment plant in general. Did, um, have you talked to anybody this week? In terms of? Just the, checking up on it? Like John Nadelsky or anybody? I haven't, no, no, in ter no. But okay. I know it's been submitted. I know, I've, I mean, I, I talked to Natalie this past, like last week. I mean, in terms of getting letters still or the application well, itself? Well, Natalie's our state I know. legislator. Right. No, so. all, the, all the letters, all the folks have been, all the offices have been reached out to. And I think, in fact, USDA has gotten outreach from folks. I understand they are you know we've done the SAM registration we've answered their financial questions so it seems to me that they're they're looking at it I mean I don't know what the process is exactly but it's definitely seems well I know what the process is you, you need <laughs> to call John Nadelsky at Jim McGovern's office oh no I already spoke to him and he said he would send yeah he's he's working oh right, no I know letter. but just ask him if he's heard anything you could That's go to all. Nashua this weekend Elizabeth Warren's having a rally you could no I have to go to New Hampshire for the regional um, conservation district meeting already oh my God. make it a twofer no, no. I'm after money um, well that's what that's what she, bothering her was about well, she's after money too so <laughs> and then yeah, and then also as far as that oh I did put Lord. that the next steps I mean one of the things that a question was coming up if we were going to need to be spending money before June 30th. Um, so I had reached out to Dave Prickett about that, but it it does occur to me that now that you have the authorization for the million, you know, there's still a, quite a process that has to be done. You have to have a contract. You have to do, you know, that has to be well, reviewed. Would, you have to have a notice to proceed. You have to, well, you know, so we still have a ways to go before we're I know. I mean, this underway. is a delicate subject, but okay, so now <laughs> we, got, we got to go ahead to fix this. Uh, who are we going to, are we going to hire Dave Prickett to design the stuff? Are we going to put we that out for have, bid? We uh, need to have um, some, uh, I think Trevor, it's, it's difficult to give you a 100% uh, answer because right. Trevor has been the point person. Right. But I definitely think next week um, we need to have a discussion of how we're going to proceed. I agree. But I, I hope between now and the end of the week, um, you'll just call John Nadelsky and ask him if he's heard anything. I'm, you know, and just chit chat. Oh. Okay, this is part of the process because when you call him and he says no, he hasn't heard anything, then he will call. And he used to work in the USDA under the Obama administration, so he knows everyone. So you want to make sure that he's making phone calls for us to check in, and that's all you're saying. Do you call him and you ask him, you know, does he ha has he heard anything? And it, well, 
could he just check to make sure that they have everything they need? Because you certainly don't want the process to be held up. And then he has to call, and then he'll call you back. And then tickle it for 10 days, and then just do the same thing, okay? Please. Thank Don't you. call him on Saturdays. He won't answer the phone. Actually, okay, you next. Might if I give you his cell phone, but I'm, that's it. You're I'm it. You're, that's it. <laughs> I will put that on though for the next. For I'll put the contracting and stuff on March 27th because I think you should start talking about that. We should. Yeah, we, we, we need to. What your process is right. going to be, and then and what you want to do is the reason why you're calling John is you're going to say, well, we're going to start the process of repairing our clarifier. Have you heard anything? And then you need to ask Dave Prickett to make sure that, you know, or talk to Trevor well, to make sure yeah, that Dave is, on, you know, ready to come and talk to us next week. If, if you could, I don't care if you talk with Trevor or with Dave, um, I, or maybe even both, but I'd like to get something from Dave as to when we're going to get this report. I mean, it's, it's really coming up. And I know at the last meeting, Trevor said, that he said it was going to be here by the end of the week, and we still haven't seen anything. And, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm more irritated at that. I know, you know, I know. But so. that's yeah. part of, we got to get going. Okay. And I, you need to get more of a handle on what's going on. Because we are yeah. getting, we're okay. using up our time. Um, so I do want to make sure that we are discussing that. Did, uh, let's see, what other things? Oh, did, uh, have you heard anything more about building inspector applications? I've I got know. no applications. All right. Why don't we put it on our agenda for next week? And that was, wasn't it? It's due March yeah, 27th, I believe. Or, I mean, st we were going to start reviewing March 27th. Next 27th. All right. Why don't you put it on our agenda? We'll talk about that next week, too. Okay. Um, I don't check. Oh. Um, I, I think, and I'm not sure where we need to approach this, but I really think that somehow we're missing the ball with this special act of 35 and the language in that as far as cleaning out ditches and stuff. Um, I actually I, have the mosquito. Um, how'd I get the mosquitoes? <laughs> well, because cleaning out the ditches, this is why you do mosquito. Oh, oh anyways. Did you, and when you spoke what, to her, what did, did she say something about that? I, I did. I talked with Lisa about it, and um, I think she, she was... She was very vague, and I don't think that she had a clear answer uh, because there's a lot of moving parts. I mean, this did happen so in 1935. So you're talking about Chapter 252? Huh? No, no, what, no, what are you talking about? About that special act of 1935 where oh, we Oh, I got, thought you were talking about No, no the special out. legislation, you know, about the sewer. In there, it specifically oh, talked we're about... we're talking about catch basins. No, 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 no. Well, you are... You sort well, of I am, but it specifically talks about cleaning out... Uh, waterways, drains, brooks, and all kinds of oh, things oh, like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, and, yes, and, you are talking part of the and, system that allows that. And what I was taught in the, the topic with uh, Lisa was, you know, how do you hold, how can part of this document survive and other parts be deleted out? Now, through, I guess, attrition that, you know, the legislator, legislation, legislators over the years have passed new laws that supersede stuff like that. But they're, they supersede other laws and not special acts. And I don't even necessarily know if she might be the right person. Is it possible just to call the AG's office and explain, hey, look, we got this special legislation, da, da, da. This is the language in it. We want to go ahead and utilize some of this. I mean, what are, what are our risks? I mean, if we get a determination from the AG's office that, you know, hey, this is still binding and enforceable, then you know we certainly will mitigate any uh, harassment we would get from maybe DEP or something Does like that. Does she think that yeah, there's why, a conflict? Why in spend time on that? Because we have a mosquito district, mosquito the management move. strategies, and what it says is is a physical method that involves cleaning or removing debris and silt from drainage systems such as ditches to maintain previously maintained water courses to reduce and prevent mosquito breeding sources okay. or potential habitat. Right. It so, gives us permission to do it. All right, then, then so, so my question is, and aren't you having a meeting, or is, aren't we looking to appropriate $20,000 to have somebody make a plan to fix over near Riches and Candy Kitchen? And we wouldn't even need that. If we can go in and just clean that ditch out, it's only a quarter of a mile well, that, long. That was part of the reasoning to do the engineering. And because we've already been trapping for three years, and we've been catching um, uh, West Nile disease mosquitoes right. there, 
we can clean out existing ditches. So, but that, uh, we're in the meeting tomorrow is to look at the overall picture and we might not be able to just do, ex you know, the clean out of the silt. It, w it might involve more cleaning, uh, more silt than would be under existing ditches or w the previous ditches. What's, what's this meet? Who is this meeting with tomorrow? Um, with Zach the, from Tie and Bond. Is that yeah. three o'clock at the Deerfield Country Store if you want to come? Deerfield Country Store. You know, across, right next to Richardson's Candy Kitchen. Kathy um, from Richardson's Candy Kitchen. Yeah. Roger Sadowski is going to be there. Sandy Williams is going to be there. Oh, you mean Roger's store, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. But I, I, my whole point is that why, why have engineering done? Because all, all well, that you is... Have is to, you have to do the hydrology. Well, this... But, because but it, we're going to do some culvert replacement. On, on Route 5? No, 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 no. But we're going to force DOT to do, to do that. Well, to do I, that. I don't think that culvert's the issue. The issue is there's no, no place for it to go. Well, the culvert, the, the culvert has been referenced as from 30 inches to 42 inches. And I, right. I tend to think that it's half the 42-inch 40, it's it's one is where we are now that's half full of dirt. But um, the, we're talking about culverts between Wapping Road and 5 and 10. There are culverts. Yes, I, what, I get that. Okay. And that's what we're getting money for. I mean, that's uh, what okay. we're putting in the grant because the fix is about five or $600,000, I think. Well, the, potentially the point, up to two million, but we're never gonna get two million. The, the point well, is of this special act, six, if it's still enforceable, we could hire somebody. You could go in at Mill Village Road and go in a straight line. And we're not talking about moving mountains. We're talking about opening it up, you know, four or five feet wide and about a foot deep. It, you don't need a lot. And that whole area would drain out. You don't even need to argue it. It's right here. That's well, then why, why don't we do that then? Well, this is why I told you that we did the mosquito district. Okay, so why don't we do this? Well, we are. When? Why, I mean, why don't well, we? Well, that was why Kevin put in for the mini excavator. No, no, you don't do that no, no. for the mini excavator. No. Well, we put, we, he, we could hire, I mean, we could hire a number of contractors, and it really wouldn't be that expensive. I, I mean, you know, and you just start there. It's like it's a quarter of a mile, and all we do is want to make a path this wide. That's all you need to do. Just read that. That allows oh. you to do that. Okay, so why don't we do this? I just then? read it. I, okay, so can we do it? Yeah. All right, so do you want to make a motion that we do this and hire somebody and go up there and clean that ditch? We're, we're, we're working with the engineer so he can tell us what ditches to clean out to well, move the water. All you can do is make one straight ditch. This is existing. Okay. Do you want me to read again? A physical method involves cleaning or removing debris and silt from drainage systems such as ditches to maintain previously maintained water courses to, re to reduce or prevent mosquito breeding sources or potential habitat. This is along North Main Street is, um, you know, I'm Bloody talking. Brook is for sure not an issue. For sure it's not an issue and some of these other ditches, but you can't build, you can't go out and do new ditches. So, but we have to, what we're doing is documenting the old ditches. And that's why Sandy Williams from Williams Farm and Roger are looking at this. And we're, gonna, we're sort of looking at what are the existing ditches that we can clean out legally under the Mosquito District. Well, if you look at that whole, that you can't in a straight stuff. line, but, but it's, how do you, do, there's nobody, I don't care how many, you went to engineering school, you've got an area from uh, Main Street and Old Deerfield over to where the Williams' uh, corn harvesting place is. It, it's all just wet in it, and it's all grown up. Well, you can't tell if they went right, left, or whatever. No, there, that's not true. There are, there are old remnants of ditches there. No, no ditches in town have been maintained since 1984. Well, and so what we're doing is mapping out the ditches that were there cleaned out in 1984 so that we can go and clean them out again under the Mosquito District. Legitimately. Right, but these you, are legitimate, yeah. this is a legitimate guess, thing. You know, the, the, the ditch doesn't go from here, then go around the corner of the table and go back around. No, over where but that's back. why that's, you, 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 well, you have to do it in a way that, um, is, well, legitimate. You, you have to look at the legitimate, what was there. You can't really do new stuff. The oh, Mosquito District doesn't, 
That's what I'm, that's what I'm well, saying. How, how much, I don't know, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this. All right. I just think it's, a, it, I think it's something that I would certainly pursue, but. Well, uh, all I'm saying is we're trying to do this. Why don't okay. you come up to the meeting tomorrow at 3 o'clock? Uh, I might be able to, and I might uh, not be able to. It depends. Okay. Well, we're meeting at 3 o'clock, and okay. we're, we're going to go over it to see, because this is, okay. we're putting in for the hazardous mitigation grant. Okay. And I think we're going to put in for around seven hundred thousand. Uh, we already know we're not going to get the two million, so we're trying to okay. um, narrow narrow down what the priority Prices. is and what we can do ourselves. Because some of the stuff we can do ourselves. Okay. The next item on our agenda is public comment. Does anybody in the crowd like to speak on any? Oh, topic? you forgot to say the selectman's comments. No, I already did, and I spoke about the building inspector. Oh, well, I have a couple comments. The mosquitoes aren't out yet. No. Come on yeah. up, Bruce. <laughs> Bruce, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say my comments because before your public comments because oh. I have two quick successful things. We had an infectious disease, emerging infectious disease workshop on Monday, and it was excellently attended, and um, there's a lot of good information there and stuff that we can adapt, and that was um, uh, supported by the Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition, and it was really good. Um, and last Wednesday was a Creating Resilient Communities meeting here um, that was excellently attended, another excellent um, attendance um, of, se of se multiple towns up and down the Deerfield River watershed, and we are partnering with um, Vermont um, on a couple major projects in the watershed, which ultimately affect us, which is very exciting. But also on um, May 3rd, here in the Deerfield um, garage, um, we got a grant to run uh, rivers and streams crossing training for highway departments. Um, so the river tables and are going to be set up, and it will show how erosion occurs in the rivers. And um, all, hopefully all our DPW will be able to attend. Um, at no cost, and um, we're hosting that, and there'll be snack, and it's all day. And then the next training is um, in June, the first week of June. We don't have a, we haven't um, gotten a date yet from the contractor, but Mass DOT and Vermont DOT are coming down together again. Another um, DPW training um, on how to properly do culverts. So I'm very, very excited because this is real hands-on training with the big tables that have water, you know, the water courses, and it shows how to work with erosion and, and uh, restoration of riverbanks um, and installation of culverts, which I think is wonderful for our highway department and what we're trying to support by hiring summer crews to do the, or summer help to do the lawn mowing in the cemeteries to free up our highway crew to do some um, work in the, that needed culvert work. That's it. Okay, Bruce, you're on. Okay. Well, first off, I didn't have any comments till a couple of things you brought up tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bruce, I'm glad that we can have I just a conversation. Came, I just came down to enjoy your company. <laughs> uh, okay, a couple of things that you talked about uh, tonight was, and I keep forgetting to follow up on, it, is the um, solar on the landfill. And, you know, I think it's a great opportunity in any town because it's useless land. Uh, the what I haven't heard addressed is uh, we have a settling problem out there. Um, if the solar goes forward, who's going to monitor that? Who is going to be responsible for uh, any damage Bruce, by that, weight that or huge, anything else? That's a huge concern of mine because um, I, you know over the years, um, as you I don't, well, I don't know how how long have you been in town? Well, you mean as a resident in or I worked in town? Well, I, I, I just know I moved here in 1980, and I... He was um, here before you. So. I, I knew that when you backed up to the yep. landfill... Right. Do you remember the, of, when the railroad went under Mill Village? The tracks, was, tracks went under, under there? It wasn't well, even a bump. It was kind of flat because it was so deep. But, well, I just... Um, I, settling has always been a concern of mine based right. on my own observations in the 80s. So right. um, but we, that's the number one thing. And we, we already talked about the plates on them for dispersing the weight and the area that would. I understand yeah. that. But it's, it's, it's I know, uh, I know. we have water puddles at this point. And what happens, 
um, you know, if it continues to settle after this solar field is in, who's responsible? And uh, and especially as Henry said, we, you know, we don't really want any part of that ownership because if we have if that solar field has to come off, we don't have to want to pay for removing that and everything there. But it's good, you know, if there's any damage or, and or settling where the DEP doesn't allow us to keep filling it and have to do something underneath, uh, that's going to be extremely expensive. So I uh, just want just making a point on I, that. Um, um, that's why we'd have an engineer yeah. sign off on it so that we could have malpractice um, if anything so, happened. Okay. Uh, the other we'd question, for the other thing is, I hate, to, I hate to bring this up up there, all this discussion just had, but the, uh, this mosquito thing that you were just talking about, did that, did that allow the right to go onto private property? Yes, that's oh, okay. why we um, went with the Mosquito District because by it's a public health threat. Yep. So, or the reason you're doing this is for public health. So you are allowed on private property. Okay, because I know that was one of the things that yep. Kevin had said over the, over time several times that part of the issue was there was a lot of ditches no, on private property. No, that's why we voted as a town to be a member oh. um, of the Mosquito District. Okay, that was it. We haven't voted um, permanently, but we're covered still. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was it. A couple yep. of questions. Thank you. It was our way of um, dealing with trying to figure out a way to deal with all the water in town. Mm -hmm. And and also, I mean, it is truly, mosquitoes are truly a public health threat and will be continue to be, with climate change, to be more of a public health threat. Mm -hmm. threat. Yep. But it's been the frustration of many, many years of trying to figure out what to do with all the water. So it all seemed right. like the best thing to do even though it's a huge, huge hassle, and we still don't have a supervisor yet, that a qualified person, but whatever. I was getting an environmental engineer, unfortunately. Somewhere halfway between. I know, I don't know what we're gonna do yet. We're hoarding our money, though, from the, the grant money, um, so that we can pay the person whenever we hire them. And so we're doing all the work ourselves. There's five of us, cool. and um, so. Okay. We're right. managing it. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. You don't want All to talk favor. about mosquitoes anymore? All you know, in favor? I, I don't All have that much yes. opportunity I... to talk about mosquitoes. <laughs> we are very successful with mosquitoes, I want you to know. And this is going to be an awful year, so we'll have catch all kinds of good stuff this year. Yeah. Just say yes, because you already said. I did. I, okay. You actually don't We're need adjourned. It. By rules, by the rules.